If you've just clicked on this video and you're wondering if it was clickbait, then yes, apologies, it was a little bit clickbait, but not entirely. So in this video, I'm gonna show you why I have quit Blender, but just for the hard surface modeling side of things, because about a year and a bit ago, I found a much better software for this and it's called Plasticity. It is a paid software, but it's very cheap compared to other things in its realm. It is a CAD modeling software um, or a NURB software. So it doesn't use polygons. It uses uh, splines and curves and things like that. And it's based on another software called Parasolid, which runs a few different engineering and manufacturing type softwares. But the team at Plasticity, uh, their sort of manifesto or their tagline is CAD for artists. So it's put it into a really artist friendly box, as you can see from this uh, UI design. We've got very simple uh, screen, but you've got all of these tools at your command just by pressing the F key on your screen. So you've got a lot of power just hiding right there um, in front of you. So what we're gonna do in this video is we're gonna make a little jewelry box and I'm gonna show you how easy it is to use uh, plasticity. And just very quickly, while I've got your attention, if you want a discount off Plasticity and you're ready to buy it, you can use the code REFUGE10 to get a 10% discount off any Plasticity license. So in Plasticity, you've got three types of objects. You've got curves, um, you've got solid objects, and then you've got um, sheets, which are kind of like a plane in Blender. So like an infinitely thin object. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to start off by pressing 7 on our numpad, just like you would in Blender, and going into top view. I'm going to press, um, I'm going to pull this curve down from the origin point, and then I'm going to press C to make it a center uh, square. Okay, and then we're going to just click right up here, and we're going to go into control point mode. We're going to drag across, and we're going to press B. And then when we pull this up and down, we can get either a rounded fillet or a square chamfer. And we're gonna stick with the square chamfer. Now, down on this right-hand side bar, we've got a whole bunch of different tools that we can use. So, and if you can see on some of them, they've got a little arrow at the bottom left and you can hold down and there'll be more tools. So on this one, we've got all the different types of circles and I'm gonna use a center point arc. I'm gonna zoom in and if I hover over this line, you'll notice that it snaps to different points. So it can snap to these edges, but it can also snap to the center of a line. So if I take this center point arc and I take it from the center of the line down to the corner, I can then just drag a curve around like that and lock it onto that other curve. So now we've got that. Now we've got these two shapes here. So what we can then do is we can click on this one and we can click up here onto face mode and then we can just pull this up and down like so. And you're gonna see this is a very simple shape. It's not nothing fancy right now, but you'll be able to see that we'll be able to build up something very complex very quickly. So what I then want to do is I want to click on this one and I just want to drag that up like that. Okay, so if you are familiar with Blender, there are a lot of shortcut keys, okay? And it's exactly the same in Plasticity. So if I want to, to select this face and rotate it, I can hit rotate, okay? And I'll be able to rotate it like that. However, if I hit R for rotate, I should have said that before, R for rotate. You've got these context options now. So I was rotating that. If I press R again, I can rotate that in screen space. If I press R again, you can see I've got these different options. And in this case, I want to press V for pivot. And then I want to just take my item to the edge of that. And I want to make my pivot like so, so I can bring that down. Okay, so that is really cool. Now what we can do is we can go press four or click up here to go into solid mode and we can select that solid. And all we need to do is press Alt and X. Okay, and you can click this side and it will 
mirror it over to the other side. If you right click on that, you'll notice that both objects are selected and we can press Alt and X, okay? And we can mirror both objects over to the other side. So now we've built up a symmetrical object very, very quickly. And if you want to get rid of the original curves, you, you can just click on curves and it will select them all and we can just press X or delete on our keyboard to delete them. Okay, so now we want to um, do a few little things. So I think what I want to do first is I want to select this edge and I can hold down control and alt. Okay, and we're going to give these all a little bevel like so. So now this is a rounded edge. Okay, and now that we've done that, we can use another tool. We're going to bring out our line tool. Okay, and we can just bring this across. And if you press X, so it's going across this red axis. If you're on the Y axis, you'd press Y. And then we can just press C for cut, select our object, and we can cut it open like that. Okay, and then we can get rid of our curve and just pressing one, two, three, four to go between edge, point, solid, and everything. So in edge mode, we can drag all the way across here. Okay, and we can either fill it or chamfer both of these. So as you can see, we're starting to develop quite a nice shape. If we wanted to join these together, okay, we can select all of our solid objects and we can go QQ and we've joined this whole base together. And then you might be able to do some different things with this edge. And once again, if you want to start mirroring it, you can mirror it. You'll notice that there's a line cut through the middle. So if you press Q, that will make it a union. And we can mirror that across again and pressing Q to union it. If you don't press Q and you accept, what will happen is that you get two separate objects. If that happens, you can just press Q and Q with both of the objects selected and it will join them together and delete any of the uh, lines or, or uh, breaks that you um, have in there. Now, what we wanna do here is we wanna select this top face and I'm gonna go into a different mat cap. If you right click on here, you can choose different mat caps. So for different modes, you might have different mat caps that you want to um use okay i'm going to press extrude on this top face extrude and i'm going to pull this out you can see it's blue now which means that it's going to try and join it together if i accept so now it's joined together so i don't actually want that behavior so if i press e for extrude and down here you can see all of these different objects like q union w difference um, shift E intersect all the different boolean functions but I want to press B for new body okay and I've actually made that a bit taller than I want okay and I'm just going to now hold on to the circle and I'm going to bring that in like so then I'm going to duplicate by pressing shift D this top object here and I'm going to come down here because I've got a sheet and I'm gonna thicken it up like that, okay? And now because we established these curves earlier on, when I try and fill it this, or chamfer it, it will fill it all the way around. So we'll give these a couple of chamfers, and this is a separate object, so. And as you can see, we're starting to build up quite a complicated hard surface object with not very much effort. Now I'm gonna press three on my numpad to go into right hand mode. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to start to bring a line across here from up here, okay? And then I'm gonna bring it right to this edge. And then I'm gonna, staying in the right hand mode, I'm gonna come down and I'm gonna hover over this edge and I'm gonna press shift, right? And you'll see that I can match the lines of this by continually pressing shift it gives me guidelines that I can use and 
as I bring it down you'll see I've got this shape now this is a little bit um, jaggy because they're, they're all hard lines so I'm going to select all of these inside um, points and I'm going to press B right and just remember if you can't see what I'm seeing you might not be in the right mode and I'm just giving these a bit of a rounded uh, aesthetic okay and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit extrude and start pulling this out like so and then if I hit tab you'll see that I'm getting this uh, overall shape so I want to keep this roughly like that okay we can go back to thicken our sheet and we bring it down like that and what I can do now is I can bring this and this down okay so we maybe want to thicken that thicker than what we just had it so we'll do that again so extrude tab to mirror it okay and then we want to thicken that I want that to be reasonably fat to be honest okay so there we go and then what we can do like I was showing before we'll get rid of our curves right as we go if you don't need a curve anymore it's nice to tidy up your scene okay so now we've got the front of this and maybe I want to pull this one down a little bit further okay and what I can do is I can bring these edges I'll just give these ones a nice rounded look okay and up here actually we, I think I want to bring this further back because I don't think it would come like that okay and it is some kind of latch so what we'll do is we'll grab a line all right and we'll just cut across there okay and if I hold down shift alt we can do that and then we can do this on these edges here as well so here's another cool trick all right you you're beveling it and you want to match the other side you just click on that and it matches okay and now we can choose both of these and it will bevel most of the way around if you can see that there's not coming all the way down find out where there's a break now there's another one here and we just give these nice little chamfers like so and this should come all the way around okay so now we've got some kind of cool latch now if we go into a more reflective matte cap you'll see that this is quite cool so this is very simple solid modeling box modeling um, in plasticity and there's a lot more power to it yet so um, there's other things that we can do so let's just go back a step and I'm going to turn the edges back on okay you can um, turn your if you right click here you can do show edges on and off or you can find them in your F menu, menu like um, oh, it's actually not in there but um, there you can set up pie menus I did a tutorial on that a while ago what we're going to do now is we're going to start using CVs editing which is turning the flat surface into a spline surface so down here you can see it says plane if I hit shift s you'll notice that that changes to spline and each and it's one by one degree and we can just keep adding to it and that gives us a little bit of uh, geometry to work with I guess you'd call it and we can give this a nice little hump like that and we could even bring this one up a little bit and then we can add our fillets to the edges like that and we can try and match that like that now this is very simple modeling we can also do something like add a little button um, to here so you'll be able to see that once you're I've got the sphere here and it'll allow me to lock to different aspects of an object like a center face or something like that so what we're going to do is we're going to put a button there and we're going to hit B to make it a new body okay and we're going to scale it down on the Y axis we're going to Q Q and we can give that a nice little bit like that 
Um, you could play around with this forever. All right, so we could, going into point only mode, we could bring this up to give it a little bit of a, a curve. Okay, and that's okay that it's intersecting with that because all we need to do is just bring these up a little bit. Okay, and maybe out if you want. Okay, so this is a really quick concept design. Um, as you can see, there's a lot of power to this. Um, we haven't even touched the surface of it. And you would be able to create things really quickly in Blender to make these kind of curves and shapes and these little, look like I do little nuanced curves, I'd imagine, just down here. So, so as you can see there, As you can see there, I was able to make that little piece at the bottom a lot more complex much more quickly. So once we're done with modeling something, you can um, take it into Blender, okay? Because Plasticity integrates perfectly with Blender. Okay, so let's um, find... Now, the Blender Bridge is a plugin provided by Plasticity and you can go and find it once you get Plasticity uh, to connect Plasticity to Blender. Now, um, I'm going to click refresh and we're going to get our object in here, or our objects rather. And if we quickly go into wireframe mode, you'll see that it is a very triangulated kind of mesh, right? And we can remesh all of these by selecting everything, coming down to refacet, there's some advanced options as well, but we'll just hit refacet and end on for now, okay? And this is what we come up with, okay? So we've got these complex shapes and you could just go and um, start UV UVing this directly. Um, if it's just an asset that you wanna be a prop for a video game or a film or something like that, and or you could some do something like you could go in and quad remesh it so what i'm going to do i'm going to hit refacet make sure it's refaceted join them all together um, i'm going to go actually i'm not going to join everything together except for i'm going to join these two together and i'm going to join everything else together okay and then i'm going to go to quad remesher which is like z remesher i'm going to hit go and remesh it and there might be some errors, but that's okay. Now, if we look at our wireframe, we can see we've got a full quad geometry, okay? And then I'm gonna remesh this as well, okay? And we can see that we've got a full quad geometry. Okay, so now we can join these two together again, okay? And maybe just remesh it one more time, just playing around here. All right, so we've got this object. It's not exactly what we saw in Plasticity, but we could uh, re-project um, the details um, in a hard surface map. But now that we've got it all quads, we could, um, I don't know, um, get a simple deform and you could start to get a much more um, different shaped mesh by using Plasticity or Uh, by using Blender, sorry. So now that we've got our jewelry box uh, made in plasticity, so now I've got something entirely different. Now this would make a great game prop, right? Once you re it and, and, and whatever, sitting on a desk in somebody's, I don't know, vanity mirror or something inside of a video game. Um, we've got this very complex shape by utilizing both Blender and plasticity together. Okay, so thanks for watching. Um, I know that a few of you already know a lot of this stuff, but I just thought like a nice little video showing you how powerful plasticity can be um, would be really handy. And I'll see you guys all in the next one. Tschüss!